Hi, Jojo Mayer here. Choosing and testing a new symbol is a lot of fun, but it can also be overwhelming and confusing sometimes for reasons that I will explain. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few pointers that I've been using throughout the years when uh, looking for a new symbol or testing symbols or comparing symbols that helped me to kind of zero in on the symbol that was right for me. All right, I'm going to show this today with uh, some 18-inch anthology symbols, but obviously everything that I'm saying today, uh, you can apply to just about any symbol that might spark your interest. All right, so the first thing, uh, usually you're going to find a new symbol at like a music store, you know, music stores have those displays of like walls of symbols. It's a good idea to take the symbol that you're interested in away from that wall because those walls are full of sympathetic vibrations that really can deviate or confuse the sound of the symbols. You know, because everything is vibrating and you really want to hear that symbol that you're interested in in all right so to so ask the story cleric for the courtesy of like putting that symbol away from other symbols all right that that would be really helpful and it'd be a good start also um be aware of uh reflecting surfaces as like nearby walls like the more air you have around the symbol the better all right so um usually uh i would look for a uh, a ride symbol or a crash symbol, like with anthology, it's a multifunctional symbol, so we have both properties. Um, if I go at the symbol first, I would just strike it with my fingertips. I listen to the tones, you know, see uh, if, if it has the right hotness or the right complexity. Um, you know, whatever suits your taste, you know, um, see how the symbol behaves from just like opening up, up the body. Also step away from the symbol because it, the sound really changes when you're on top of it or if you take a, a few steps back. You will notice that you hear different tones if you uh, are at proximity or a little bit fur further away. All right, so let's uh, test some ride properties. Uh, like what I would really look for is that the stick never gets swallowed by the swell of, of the body, even if I play harder. So I always want to hear that uh, stick definition. When you test crash properties, I would do it with my fingertips first to see how quickly the, the symbol will open. And then once you go at it with, with the stick, I see how the symbol changes. If the tone changes, if it gets splashy, if I play it hard, or if it has a consistency in like tone throughout the dynamic spectrum. Always make sure to strike the symbol at a glancing motion, like, like never hit it, uh, you know, straight into the, 
into the edge that that will hurt the cymbal and it will also not sound good all right so now what about if you compare cymbals not just one cymbals but like against multiple symbols and we have a two or three symbols so let me get a few symbols okay so when you test multiple symbols against each other one very important thing make sure they're all in the same distance from the floor this is not good because you're going to deal with reflection from the floor that's going to add to the impression that you have like the symbol so make sure uh, you're you're as close to like a uh, uh, like a zero line. That's about right. All right now. Very important, also make sure that the symbols are not just on a, on a plain level, but also that they're all on the same type of surface. You know, if, if one symbol stand is on carpet and one symbol stand is on tile, evidently it's really going to affect the sound. Um, so that's one thing. Like once I zero in on a quality of a symbol that I like, you know, I will also uh, swap it because the stand very often has a big effect on the sound of a cymbal. Sometimes you will hear a tone or frequencies that, that might bother you and you might find out that it's actually the stand that produces the, those type of frequencies. Um, and talking about stands, very important. I always test cymbals on straight stands. Uh, boom stands vibrate much more and they create a life of their own that really uh, affects the way the cymbal sounds. Also another idea, I swap the stand sometimes, you know, to zero in, you know, that weird tone that you didn't like in one symbol. Make sure it's not coming from the symbol, but it might come from the stand. <laughs> so these symbols are a little bit different. We have two anthology low bells and one anthology high bell which has a little bit more pr pronunciated high end definitely it's a little bit of a different color um, so which brings me to a very important and always or very often overlooked uh, subject you know you might look at a symbol or, or test it on the floor and it might sound really great and smooth and it happened to me before uh, you know I fell in love with like the silkiness and the smoothness and everything was pristine and, and nice it was just a really beautiful sounding instrument then I took it to play with with the band and it didn't project so it kind of like uh, sometimes you need a little bit tones that like pronunciate like if a symbol is too sm uh, smooth it might not cut through so it's important to kind of anticipate what the cymbal would sound like once you play it in music. And it doesn't matter if it's a, an acoustic piano trio or, or a metal band with like distorted guitars. Um, imagine what the cymbal will perform once it's, it's uh, wrapped in music. And one good idea that helped me 
is, you know, you take some cotton, you know, like, you know, don't go crazy with it, just like a little bit fluffy, just to cut a little bit of the high end off, all right? And then I will test the cymbals again. So now I can hear what gets past the cotton will get past the music. It will get past the distorted guitar or whatever environment that it is. You know, it's just, uh, um, you know, I'm taking this a little bit out, you know, not as much. So, in the same way that a cymbal might not that sound really great, might not project inside the music, the opposite can also happen, that you hear some weird tones that, that you don't like, and what is this? And once it's in, inside the music, you know, it will be completely filtered away. As a matter of fact, often some of those tones give the cymbal a little bit extra punch, you know. So, this takes a little bit of experience and stuff like that, but you know, just um, I'm telling you this that you understand that this can happen. Uh, that uh, maybe that weird tone might actually, after all, make the symbol unique and and help it project inside the music. Right? So, so there's a there's bad bad and there's also good bad, not just with symbols but uh, with everything. So. Um, the, another approach, if you don't have uh, cotton, I will close the ear that is facing the cymbal and see how the sound of the cymbal hits my other ear. Right? So you use all these techniques and see not what changes, but what stays the same. You know, you got to look for that say, okay, I do like this. No matter what I do, the symbol will just pronunciate itself and express itself that way. All right? So that, that's always a good uh, approach to, to zero in on your symbol. Another technique that I sometimes use, uh, especially when I look you know, for like a ride symbol for maybe jazz or like acoustic music. Um, I use open structure headphones uh, and I play along the music. You know, you can do it with any music, really. Uh, what I like to do is uh, I use old record, records of uh, Oscar Peterson trio, minus drums, which is like uh, with Herb Ellis and Ray Brown, great records or some, uh, uh, some old Nat, Nat King Cole records that Traditionally, didn't have a drummer, and I see how the sound of the cymbal sits inside the band. But you can do this with any style of music, uh, and and see how the cymbal behaves. You know, if it, if it adds something inspiring, if you if you can visualize that. All right. Now, um, another important thing is testing cymbals can be really straining. It's a lot of concentration and just you know, assign those frequencies and, and there's going to be ear fatigue. So just take a, take a break, you know, come back with fresh ears. And uh, if you bring someone, if, if you have a friend, do some blindfold tests. I also do that, you know, like, because you want to make sure you pick the symbols from what you hear, not from what you see, right? Uh, so, you know, I have them swap them around and I go like, okay, this is the one. And sometimes it is su surprising uh, how much truth comes out in like a blindfold test. Ultimately, uh, if you put a symbol set together consisting of different symbols, uh, my main approach is to go for contrast and big intervals, like sonic contrasts. Uh, a lot of drummers, I think, make the mistake that they choose symbols which are too similar. You know, like, you know, you would have a 16-inch and a 15-inch crash 
that once you go at him, you know, pretty much will just sound like one symbol and it'll be mainly visual. So I always look for, for a symbol to make the music interesting, to, to, to create highs and lows and, and darkness and, and, uh, uh, and, and highs to, to create that, that tension. Evidently, it's, it's a matter of taste also. And you're, you know, that, that's, uh, I would not interfere with, with that, but personally, this is the approach that I take when I put a set of drums, uh, of uh, cymbals together. Well, drums also as well, by the way. Um, all right, concluding, uh, I, uh, when you zero in on like the cymbal set you want, the one or two, take them to the drum set and play them in its natural habitat. Uh, this is especially true for hi-hats because um, the feel and the sound of a hi-hat, like the full impression, will usually not unfold unless you sit behind the kit and you know operate the pedal the way you normally do and not like standing, balancing on one foot. That's gonna change the sound too. All right, these are my 50 cents when it comes to picking and choosing, testing a new symbol. Uh, it has served me well over the years and I hope it's useful information that's gonna clarify things for you as well.